we are super late to the party on this one. But let's jump into it. I'm Eric Malachite, and today on Science Get, we're talking about what will happen now that James Webb has been hit by a meteoroid. So, the James Webb Space Telescope has been hit by a meteoroid. When this story originally broke, I was shocked, and despite wanting to rush home to work on a video about it, I was not in a position to do so. At the time, however, it seemed as if the damage was negligible, and that the telescope's operations would not be impeded by it. But is this still the case? Well, it's a little complicated. First off, the meteoroid in question was basically just a piece of dust, but as we all know from the myriad of videos we've done on asteroids, a piece of dust can still be quite damaging if it's moving fast enough. The damage caused by this impact is actively being felt in the data that's coming in from the telescope, and while that's not going to impact the telescope's performance, it does raise some important questions about what NASA and JPL will need to do if more impacts occur. In fact, NASA says that the images produced by James Webb will not be impacted by the damage caused by the meteoroid. Well, mostly. But NASA, JPL, and everyone else involved with James Webb knew that impacts like this were a possibility. So what can they do to service James Webb considering how far away it is from Earth? And what contingencies are already in place to mitigate issues once they crop up? Space is dangerous. It's a quote from The Martian by Andy Weir that I use a lot. A lot. But I use it so much because it's true. While life down here on Earth certainly ain't no picnic, space exploration comes with many challenges that need to be overcome. The engineers and scientific minds behind James Webb knew without a shadow of a doubt that the telescope would be hit by meteorite fragments out in L2. In fact, all spacecraft are designed to withstand certain types of meteorite fragment impacts within reason. Micrometeorites constantly bombard satellites in low Earth orbit, and those satellites have systems for avoiding larger ones. For other issues, manned missions are sometimes planned to replace damaged instruments on important space-based equipment. But it's much easier to get to satellites, Hubble, and the International Space Station because those things are all close to Earth. James Webb is not. The L2 Lagrange point is 1.2 million kilometers from the Earth, and with our current technology, a manned mission would take weeks to reach James Webb, and that's a little generous. Time will tell if NASA will need to update its estimate for how often impacts like this may happen, and what sort of impact they will have on the future of James Webb's observations. The mirror segment that was struck is known as C3. James Webb has 18 beryllium gold tiles that make up its 6.5 meter wide primary reflector. The impact left what officials are calling a dimple in the mirror segment. James Webb has been hit before. Before this dust-sized meteoroid struck segment C3, it had been struck four other times by smaller micro-objects. But this meteoroid was far larger than what the James Webb team had predicted. To make matters a bit more complicated, the compound mirror is not protected by a shield, so it's totally exposed. This was a design choice made by the team, so it's not as if the telescope isn't durable. It is built to withstand most stuff that the L2 Lagrange point can throw at it. James Webb is designed in such a way that the team behind the telescope can find workarounds to problems that could arise from damage caused to it. In fact, the engineers working on the telescope are already working on repositioning mirror C3 to account for that damage. But that damage portion will create some distortion in images produced by the telescope because they can't address all of it. What if this happens again? What if it's a regular occurrence? With the first scientific images set to be unveiled very soon, what is the worst case scenario? While this is totally speculation on my part, thank you, computer, I think if the damage becomes severe enough, we may need to think about sending maintenance missions to James Webb to replace mirror segments over time. Hubble has been serviced by astronauts five different times since its launch in 1993, but such hypothetical missions would be much more costly given James Webb's orbiting location out in the L2 Lagrange point. Ultimately, I think we're going to have to develop more efficient space exploration technology to make exploring the solar system and maintaining observatories like James Webb more cost effective. And I think private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin will be pivotal to that goal. But in the meantime, could we also see automated drones get sent out that way? I mean, we've put probes and landers on asteroids, moons, and planets like Mars that are capable of performing scientific experiments, so why not create a piece of machinery that can replace mirror segments should the need arise? But what do you think? 
Do you think James Webb is a sitting duck? Do you think the telescope will be a gigantic paperweight and therefore a waste of money? Or do you think that we will find a way to make it worth it by tackling the challenges that this meteoroid strike represents? Let me know down below. If you dug this content, be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz and like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and join our Discord community to meet other science nerds like you. And hey, look at all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy.